we want to get to a segment that we're going to call story, not a story, really. Right? So we see so many headlines right now. And sometimes you can't really figure out whether or not there's truth to them or not. And if there's actually real meat to the story, right? So our first headline is nobody believes in the Patriots. You see it everywhere. Nobody, right? Underdogs. Mina spends most of her time on Twitter talking to Patriot fans about no, how no. one time... I don't want to talk to you. One time you didn't pick the Patriots winning. Literally one time. And they screen grabbed it. And play, actually, they played back some of your... Somebody made a video, like a super cut or something, <laughs> and put music to it. Um, okay, so I'm going to come out right at the top of this. Not a story in the sense of it, it's not true that the Patriots were, you know, largely perceived as underdogs. So I got dragged into this because I pointed out uh, this was after Tom Brady said, you know, that people think we suck and stuff. Yeah. So more ESPN experts picked the Patriots to win the Super Bowl than any other team at the beginning of the season. During the season, they were almost unanimously favored in almost every game. They were favored in every game. Uh, the only game where I think the insiders panel was split was the Chiefs. And really, the only time they haven't been favored is in Kansas City, and it was like by three on the road, and they had been bad on Which their made not sense. worse on yeah. the road all season. So the notion to me that there are these underdogs is crazy. Here's the thing, and, and I actually tweeted this out a few weeks ago and got mauled for it. Um, I think to be the leader, to be on top, to be the champ, I think that's harder to have that mentality, to go through the entire tournament knowing that you're the best, saying you're the best. I think playing that underdog card there almost makes it a little easier for them to get motivated. Yeah. Uh, a few weeks ago, Drew Brees was talking about it during his press conference. He said, it's not about dealing with the, the hard things that, you know, with this team, the negatives. Sometimes the challenge for being a great team is dealing with success. And Absolutely. I think that falls in, in, in the same regard. So while people say they're counting us out, and, and I, I, I don't think people really are. So you're saying when we, you and I get to the top, we have to maintain that underdog mentality even constantly. more constantly perceived by everyone as a goat. I'll just say one more thing about the pass before we get to the next one. If they were doubted during the regular season, because you know, they weren't picked in every game, they were split. I picked them, uh, the Chargers, to upset them. Yep. It's because they were a worse team in the regular season. They have got improved in so many phases of the game in the postseason. We'll talk about that later, but they've been, they're like heating up at the right time, to use a cliche. Well, they're not heating up, but they're, they're heating up at the time that they always heat up, yes. though, Mina. Perfect. Like, yeah. They always start off slow, they have a rough September, and then they always wind up here, right? Tom Brady has gone to the Super Bowl 50% of the time during his career. Think about that. I know. It's incredible. All right, our next story. <laughs> uh, Todd Gurley is hurt. Ooh. Do you think that there's actual some realness yes. to that headline because listen we saw what happened in the NFC championship game with the Saints he came out very honest said listen there was a dud I played terrible yeah but was there more to it which was interesting right because he was the immediate speculation was he must have been hurt not only was he did he struggle did he drop those passes he struggled with pass blocking got blown up a couple times on blitzes and everyone noticed um, you know and then ultimately got like 13 yards or something not all of that happened, but he also wasn't given many opportunities. Snap, C.J. Anderson largely took his Absolutely. spot. So the, the immediate reaction was, okay, he, he must be hurt. I don't think so, though. I think there's something to it. I think players never want to fully be honest and open about what their situation is at this point in the season. Right. It's, this is what they're working for. This is why they go through training camp and they kill themselves and they give up and sacrifice. So I think there's something there. It's just whether or not... He wants to face it. And the fact that McVay yeah. is going to C.J. Anderson tells me that he knows well, more. I think that, so McVay after the game said, well, game flow, call for. He said, I'll, I got to use Todd Moore. And I think he will in the Super Bowl. We'll talk about uh, that. Absolutely. But I think he was kind of telling the truth, right? Because the way they use Gurley on those outside zones, the Saints, their linebackers were doing an excellent job of containing. Meanwhile, they didn't have Sheldon Rankin. So I really believe there was some validity in McVay saying, I just want to ram C.J. Anderson mm -hmm. up the gut. Yeah. And I will be surprised to see if we see C.J. Anderson have that type yes. of game against the Patriots. So, again, we'll, we'll look at it. Totally. We get, we're going to get to a lot of stuff. All right. So, so we were talking about Gronk before, <laughs> right? And we are saying he's got a little bit of an extra thing to him, which is, like, kind of nuts to think about because he already – He's so extra. He is so extra. Uh, do you think that this is his last game, right? We've been speculating yeah. this forever. You think this is it? I kind of do. I, regardless of what happens, you know, that, so the constant question has been, does he going to go to Hollywood or WWE and be the rock? 
he's so hurt at this point. Yeah. I mean, he struggled this season, you know, and it just seems possible. I think that I'm, I'm with you. I think I think he's going to hang it up after this year. I think it's going to be a walk off. I think they're going to win the Super Bowl and he's going to call it and and it will probably be the most um, the most epic party, <laughs> was, you know, we, we've ever seen probably after that, um, which, you know, I look forward to seeing all of that on social media. Um, all right. Our next story, not a story. I love this one. Oh, boy. The Saints deserve to be here, right? So what <laughs> a week and a half it's been for New Orleans, right? So uh, players saying a lot of or sharing their honest thoughts about Roger Goodell over the last few weeks. Cam Jordan, I talked to him at the Pro Bowl. He's like, look, we could have done a lot more, yes. but it hurts. It's, you know, we're pretty bitter. We're on group text talking about it. First of all, do you think that they're being a little too bitter? Is it time to, to move on? No. I, <sighs> what happened to them? The way that went down, everything about it, and we don't need to relitigate it, Yeah, is so unprecedented to me that I, I understand why they're still on it. Look at this. And well, we we're, we're, we're basically Hello. put together the moments of bitterness and pettiness from the Saints. I mean, this was probably, in my opinion, the worst with the government shutdown and yeah. they're spending their time. Not a great look. You know, and then obviously we saw Cam Jordan at the Pro Bowl where, you know, blow whistles, not games. And, you know, he, he's actually done the best job, I think, of any of the Saints players that have spoken to the media about moving on and but it, but it hurts. They, they were they were just that close.